Hey guys, uh, we're going to be covering um, chain rule in reverse in this session here. This is for integrating. Let's get started. What we'll do is um, we'll just have a look at a quick um, differentiation using the chain rule. So if we have this function y equals 2x squared plus 3x to the power of 4, I want to use it. Uh, I want to use the chain rule different. I want to use the chain rule to differentiate this. So y dash would then equal 4 multiplied by 2x squared plus 3x to the power of 3. And of course, we have to multiply by the differentiation of whatever's inside the bracket, which in this case is going to be 4x plus 3. So simplifying this, we're going to get 4 multiplied by 4x plus 3 multiplied by 2x squared plus 3x to the power of 3. So the only reason I want to do this is because, because um, generally speaking, what you kind of need to notice is you'll actually end up with a function where it's g dash of x multiplied by f dash of g of x. Now this might seem a bit overwhelming right now, but just bear with me. We'll look at a couple of examples and you'll start seeing the patterns. So here's the first example. I want to integrate 3x multiplied by x squared plus 4 to the power of 5 dx. Now what I'm going to do is slightly different. Um, what I want to say is, if I'm going to say, how about I put if y is equal to x squared plus 4 to the power of 6. Now the reason I'm choosing is 6 is because I know that if I integrate the previous function, I would have something, well, x squared plus 4 to the power of 6. But what I want to do now is I want to look at what happens if I have x squared plus 4 to the power of 6 and if I differentiate it. So if I differentiate it, then I know y dash would equal... 6 multiplied by x squared plus 4 to the power of 5 and that's of course multiplied by the differentiation of whatever's inside the bracket which is 2x. So simplifying this y dash would equal 12x times x squared plus 4 to the power of 5. Now I've got 12x times x squared plus 4 to the power of 5 but the original question wanted me to integrate 3x. The way I can get from 12x to 3x would, of course, be to divide it by 4, because 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. So in other words, I can actually rewrite this whole question uh, as integral of 12x. Hang on, let me just write this up first. and then. So I could write this as 12x but divided by 4 because I know that 12x divided well 12 divided by 4 would give me 3x now from this point onwards what I know is I know that 12x x squared plus 4 to the power of 5 it actually integrates to x squared plus 4 to the power of 6 so I could actually replace that that whole thing as a quarter multiplied by x squared plus 4 to the power of 6 because that's what differentiate well x squared plus 4 to the power of 6 differentiates to whatever is in the green box and of course I have to add the plus c <laughs> well <laughs> it might seem a bit too much for you guys but I've got two more examples set up so you know we'll just go through a couple more examples and see if you guys can get work out the pattern but the best thing to do is once you finish integrating the function is quickly differentiated to check whether you're getting the actual question itself. All right, let's have a look at another example. Okay, in this example, I want to integrate 6x e to the power of x squared plus 1 dx. So as usual, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out if y is equal to e to the power of x squared plus 1, then y dash would equal e x squared plus 1 multiplied by the differentiation of the power which is 2x. So in this case y dash is equal to 2x e to the power of x squared plus 1. Now comes the tricky part where we kind of need to see what we need to fact, um, factorize in. So for example we know that 6x e x squared plus 1 dx could be written as integral of 3 times 2x ex squared plus 1. 
So hopefully you guys can see that. Because 3 times 2 is just 6. Now I could actually take the 3 out of the integral, which means I'd get 3 integral 2x ex squared plus 1. Sorry, I forgot the dx there. dx there. And of course from this point it's quite straightforward because 2x ex squared plus 1 is what you get when you differentiate ex squared plus 1. So integral of 2x ex squared plus 1 would equal e of x squared plus 1. So this whole thing, this whole thing get, just gets replaced as 3 multiplied by e x squared plus 1. And that's it. Oh, sorry, don't forget the plus c. And that's how you do this question. Now I'm going to do one more question. It's a, uh, it's to do with trig. Um, hopefully you guys get the general idea from this point onwards, but I'm going to do one more, as I said earlier. It'll be um, to do with trig if you want to have a look. So in this example, I want to integrate 2 sine x cos, cos x to the power of 4. Now, I know that when I in, uh, differentiate cos x, I'll get minus sine x. So obviously I'm going to use the chain rule in reverse here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up y is equal to cos x to the power of 5. Because I know that, I mean, that's the whole trick. It's, I want to try and see what happens if I differentiate this. So I've got cos x to the power of 5. If I differentiate this, I'm going to get 5 cos x to the power of 4 multiplied by differentiation of cos x, which is minus sine x. So, when I simplify this, I'm going to have y dash is equal to negative 5 sine x cos x. Now, unfortunately, sorry, cos x to the power of 4. Unfortunately, the value here in, in this case is negative 5, while in my question, the value is positive 2. So how do I get from negative 5 to positive 2? Now, I know that if I want to get from negative 5 to positive 2, so basically I need to figure out what number I need to multiply by negative 5 to get to positive 2. So in this case, it's going to be negative 2 over 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the whole question again. So the, I'm going to rewrite the whole question as, so instead of the 2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with negative 2 over 5 times negative 5 because I know that this is equal to 2 and of course sine x cos 4x will remain as it is dx now what I could do is I could take out negative 2 over 5 out of the integral and I've got multiplied by negative 5 sine x cos 4x dx from this point onwards it's straightforward because I know that apologies I know that negative 5 sine sine x cos 4x is actually what you get when you differentiate cos 5x. So in this case, I could almost say negative 2 over 5 times cos x to the power of 5 and plus c. If you guys missed how I got that, that negative 5 sine x cos 4x is basically what you get when you differentiate cos 5x. And that's where the, all the links are. Okay, that's about it. Uh, apologies for the long, long video, guys, but um, hopefully you get the idea, and after a few practice runs, um, you get the hang of chain rule in reverse. All right, thanks for watching.